Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about hibernate object states or the persistent life cycle. Now when you work with hibernate we use session. Now in session we use different methods, right? We use, uh, we use save, we use uh, update, or we use delete. Now when you use these methods there's something which is changing behind the scene which is your states of the object. Now it is applicable for JPA and hibernate as well. So what happens is we have different states. So let's imagine uh, we have a start state or we're going to say start state, but then uh, we have two things in Java for sure, right? It doesn't matter is it hibernate is included or not. When you create an object, that's a new key, that's a new object for you, right? So we got a new object. And then once you're done with your object work, you know, no, you normally nullify it or you make it eligible for garbage collection, maybe by uh, completing the scope or by writing the equal to null. So we have these two states for sure but for every project or for any every object. We have new and we have the end state or you can say destroy state. But in between this, if you can put hibernate. So hibernate has its own state, right? The first one is, let's say you've got the object and I, my favorite class is alien. So I will say I, will, I have an object of alien here. Now this alien will have certain features. Let's say alien ID, alien name and alien tech or the favorite technology for that particular alien. Example, if, if I get my object, uh, that will be Java. So the Java, I love Java, right? So uh, let's say I have, set, I have set all these values. The moment I do that, the moment I create the object, in Hibernate, that becomes a transient state. So your object in a is, a, is in a transient state now. What exactly it means? So transient state means if you do any modification with the object and if you set any values, and the moment you close the application or the moment you destroy the object, that data, I mean, you will, you will lose that data. You cannot get it back. So if you want that data back, again, you have to make sure that you should persist it, right? And that's why we have the second state. So let's say if you want to save this data, so in Hibernate we do that, we say save or we say persist. So the moment you say save or persist, your object get into persistent state. That's the second state you have. The first state is transient. By default, all the objects are transient. The moment you try to save it, that becomes persistent. Now in persistent, whatever you do with the object, it is, it is there in the, in the database. In fact, there's a direct linkage between your object, the Java object, and the database, database row. So every time you modify, if, if, you, if you modify anything in the object, that will be applicable in the database as well. Yeah, example, let's say if you got the object, okay, you got the alien object and you say, okay, I want to update some, I, I want to, so I, I want to assign the data and then you say save. But what happens when you try to uh, change the value of the alien? Let's say if you want to change the technology for an alien, let's say I love Java now, but maybe in future I would love something else. Let, let's say a blockchain, maybe let's say Python. So if I change that value after saving, still it will be applicable. It will, it will get updated in the database as well because we have, not, uh, we have not removed the object from the persistent state. So whatever you do with the object will be applicable in database as well. Yeah. So we have two states first, we have transient and we have persistent. The next one is actually detached. So let's say you are, you are working with the object and the object is, is there in the persistent, persistent state and you want to modify something. Every time you modify, it will affect database and you don't, don't want to do that now. Maybe you want to, perf you want to perform some operation and that operation will should not be there in the, in the data, database. So before doing that, you have to make sure either you commit your session or you close your session or you have to detach the object from the session or from the position context. So we can use method like detach to do that. And the moment you do that, it will, so your object goes from persistent state to the detached state. Okay, we have talked about three states now. We have transient, we have uh, persistent and we have detached. In some terms, you can imagine detached and transient as the same state because in both the state, it is not related to database, right? There's no, there's no persistent between your object and database. But yeah, we have this three state. We have transient, we have, uh, we have persistent, and we have detached. But let's say you have removed the data from the database. So you got the object and that is in persistent state and now you want to remove the data, maybe by delete or by remove method. The moment you say delete, it goes into a removed state. So basically, so it is there with the Java. So that object is there in Java, but is not there in database because you have removed it or because you have deleted it. So you have three, you have four states now. You got transient, you have persistent, you have detached, and you have removed. Yeah. So when you get the object, let's say new state, from new it goes to transient, from transient when you say save it goes to uh, persistent from persistent it goes to detach when you deta detach it so it is like you have a database or you have a persistent context you have the object you have detaching it that's detached state 
and then when you delete the data or when you uh, when you remove the data that becomes your remove state but the question arises what if you don't want to create a new object or you don't want to save the data in a database when you, you want to fetch it now what happens when you fetch it let's say if you if you are in a new state and you want to fetch data in that scenario you don't have to make it transient first what you can simply do is you can say find or you, you have different methods like you have get or you have find so when you say get your object by default get into persistent state because you are fetching from database right so it is a, it is in the persistent state which means after doing get and if you uh, if you modify the object it will affect database as well yeah again in, after this video i do have the implementation of this so you will see that uh, implementation later but then you yeah, are so the, we have uh, from from the new so when you say find or get it will it will get into persistent state right so there's a shortcut as well uh, but let's say after uh, in, in transient itself if you don't want to continue with the object if you don't want to modify or something you can directly destroy it so all the object will be eligible for garbage collection after removing it or after deta detaching it or after or of the transient state itself yeah so that makes sense right so yeah that's it how that's how you make it work in fact you can go back from detach to uh, persistent state with the help of save method or or update method yeah so those are the things available uh, in hibernate yeah so those are the object states available again how to implement this that we'll see in the uh, practical implementation so i hope you enjoyed the video so thank you so much for watching